I will just take issue with the one thing you said, which is that no one in the federal government has the equity capability. I was sort of surprised and, and then not so surprised to learn that the CIA has a tool they call InQtel. But you know, it's owned by a not-for-profit. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Oh, I also know they don't have to report <laughs> where they put the money <laughs> because they are the CIA, <laughs> right. And unfortunately, that's not, uh, those are not the rules that Elizabeth or I or Wendy are gonna be operating yeah. under, so. Uh, look, look. Uh, I, I think you're right. Look, this this doesn't this doesn't have to be that complex either, right? There are two there are two big things I'd say. One is, we are implementing a pretty aggressive procurement reform, so we'll have real targets that say, you know, in a certain amount of time. And I'm trying to figure out how to define this and what the target should be: five or ten or twenty percent of our spend everywhere should be with these types of partners and organizations. Now we have to define these types and we have to pick the target number. But the reality is, you know, people know this is the right thing to do. I was on the phone with our Philippines team and I didn't even realize they, it was to talk about procurement reform, they're one of the pilot countries. Um, and they had 12 of their foreign service nationals came to this meeting, this phone discussion, on a holiday. I didn't realize it was a holiday. And they came because they said, you know, for, for decades or 10 years or 12 years, we've worked here and we know these great local institutions, local businesses, local partners, and have had this sense that we should be able to support them. But we've always just told them, oh, US uh, agencies don't do that, so you're on your own. And that's just been the way it was. And when they saw the procurement reform document and game plan, they said this to us felt like it was something we could use to do what we've always wanted to do, which is move resources directly to these local partners uh, that are essentially social entrepreneurs or, or small businesses. And, and I, I think you're gonna see that, you know, 70% of our international workforce of, you know, 6,500 people uh, is, are, are essentially foreign service nationals. They're people who, many of them are doctors, lawyers, engineers, PhDs. They're people who know those communities, they know how to search and find interesting partners there, and they're eager to have more flexibility. So, it, you know, it is, but I'll, I'll also push back a little bit and say there's also a fine line between when you run a very large, complex bureaucracy, that being interpreted in some places where you're not able to as directly communicate as a license to essentially continue supporting things that don't work. And, you know, and the, the distinction between learning and failure is, I think, a very important one, obviously. Uh, I, I say that, you guys really want to tape all this? So I, I say that because, you know, when I was at Gates and Elizabeth and I worked together, but also we did, right? We, uh, we called a lot of failure learning and, and just sort of plowed through, and that was great. And it, it sort of worked. I, I don't think an official agency this big can, can get away with that in the same, with the same amount of flexibility. So we have, to, we have to kind of own that problem. So the way I think we own it, being specific, is, is you have to invest a lot more time and effort upfront in the planning. And you plan against what are the milestones you're trying to achieve, what are the hypotheses you're testing. And then if you frame things as hypothesis tests, then you have the space to go either way and to, to suggest that you're learning something about that hypothesis and it's important enough to continue that. We as an institution over time had sort of degraded our own processes for planning and, and that kind of study. You know, in the last administration, it was very tough. We actually literally moved the policy and planning divisions out of the agency. We took the budgeting and quantitative people out uh, and we, for some reason, I'm still trying to fully understand uh, that administration stopped identifying projects based on individual project identifiers, which sort of degraded the capacity to use this as a big data-oriented experimental platform. So some of the things we have to do to get to the starting line, Simon, of your question is just rebuild some basic capabilities, and we're doing all three of those things are already done. And, and if we do both of those aggressively, uh, it won't happen right away, but maybe five years from now. And hopefully it's not specific to USAID. I mean, I look across the US government, and uh, I think other entities have, have sort of more fresher brands, but you peel that off pretty quickly and it all looks pretty much the same. And, and I, I look at partners around the world, I don't think it's all that different. Um, so I, I just think when you're in 
when you're in a large assistance official capacity, the rules and processes have gotten to a point across the board where you're not driving that kind of effectiveness. So, uh, so you know, we can change. And, but, but we have to do both. We have to do both and we have to do it together. And I'd encourage you, I don't know if this is an Andy task or maybe an Andy partner task, to uh, you know, find a way to engage with DFIT, find a way to engage with the bank. Uh, all these institutions, I think, have some energy for this, just don't necessarily know exactly how to operationalize the change. Uh, to answer your question specifically, I think there, there are a few things. One is, you know, as w we go forward, we have an entrepreneurship program and portfolio that Wendy will, will manage, and many of the sort of conference deliverables, so to speak, are in that context. Uh, and so, so that all of that is, is work that's sort of underway, and we hope through, you know, I, I, to be honest, I, I just kind of got there and learned about it and watched it unfold. Uh, I think these procurement reforms and the work we're doing with the innovation funds are probably more robust vehicles over an 18-month time frame for actually driving real resources against the types of organizations and institutions you're referring to uh, than some of the things that were uh, highlighted in that particular conference, like uh, coaching for business leaders and, and all of those types of things, which are great, great things, uh, but they're not sort of capital investments or, uh, you know, saying, okay, let's hold hands and put money into the handshake and then, then go forward.